Hello, my name is Jamie Dobbins, and I am creating this video to serve as a reflection for my CUIN 4363 class, Gifted and Talented Instruction, under Dr. Jonathan Johnson at the University of Houston. I was assigned to attend two workshops that focus on gifted and talented education. As the second workshop, I chose to attend a webinar. The webinar that I chose to attend is called the School-Wide Cluster Grouping Model, Challenging Gifted Students and Improving Achievement for All, Part 1, Implementing and Supporting the School-Wide Cluster Grouping Model. The webinar is given by Free Spirit Publishing and is given by Dr. Diana Bruez. In the School-Wide Cluster Grouping Model, all students are placed in classrooms purposely based on their potential, their abilities, or their performance. Grouping students in such a way is beneficial for all students so that teachers only focus on one specific type of instruction rather than trying to teach too wide of a range of students with one lesson. According to Dr. Bruez, the school-wide cluster grouping model is also beneficial for students because by placing all high-achieving students in one classroom and placing all lower-achieving students in another classroom, students receive more targeted instruction. Also, teachers' attention can be more focused. For example, Dr. Bruez points out in the webinar that oftentimes the lower achieving students receive the vast majority of the teacher's attention. Through reducing the range of abilities within one classroom through the school-wide cluster grouping model, teachers can potentially spend more time speaking with each student rather than focusing on a specific group of students who need the most help. Dr. Boulez provides many reasons why the school-wide cluster grouping model should be implemented in schools all across the country and perhaps all across the world. These benefits of the school-wide cluster grouping model includes that it embraces diversity, expands gifted skills, is at little or no cost to educators or institutions. Another great benefit of the school-wide cluster grouping model is that it raises expectations for all students. A reason why the cluster grouping system is so beneficial for students who are gifted and talented is because it allows them to collaborate with students who are also gifted in specific areas and who share their same interests. Through creating an environment with shared interests, it increases the acceptance and understanding of diversity, which is critical for students who are gifted and talented. Also, students who are gifted and talented need practice developing social and emotional skills, and collaborative groups are a perfect setting for them to do so. One question raised in the webinar is, why don't we implement the cluster system in all classes? Well, the answer is, according to Dr. Ruiz, is that teachers need to be specially trained and focus on the needs of their specific group of students. So, if the teachers have the higher achieving class that includes gifted and talented students, then they, need to, then they need to be trained on how to properly educate those gifted and talented students in their classroom. According to Dr. Brule, the cluster grouping system is very impactful on all students' education, but especially students who are gifted and talented, by helping them receive a more targeted education. Dr. Brule wants the cluster grouping system to be adopted by the whole country and perhaps even the whole world. Doing this would totally revolutionize education. If the benefits of the cluster system are as vast as Dr. Brule states in our webinar, then I wholeheartedly agree that the cluster grouping system needs to be more commonplace in our public school system. I see teachers struggle with students with huge ranges in their abilities. It's hard to create lessons that are differentiated, and right now, there isn't much help for teachers who have such broad range of students and abilities in their classroom. However, with the cluster grouping system, teachers can become more specialized and become very good at educating their group of students. This could be especially beneficial for students with exceptional needs, such as students who are gifted and talented, students from poor backgrounds, and students from marginalized ethnic backgrounds. After the webinar ended and I had some time to reflect, I did have a few questions. First of all, what are the drawbacks of the cluster grouping system? Dr. Bruez did not mention any drawbacks, and I know that there has to be some. I wonder what they are. 
I might try researching to see if I can find any drawbacks on the internet. Also, the cluster grouping system puts a lot of responsibility on the teacher in charge of the clusters for each grade level. What happens if that teacher gets sick and has to take an extended leave, or goes on maternity leave, or something bad happens and they aren't able to come to work? Who takes over those teachers' responsibilities since that teacher was fully trained to be the cluster grouping teacher at that grade level? I wonder what would happen in that situation in a real public school setting. I see the cluster grouping system as being a valuable tool in the revolution towards making education of all students, but especially gifted and talented students more individualized and, and appropriate for the students' individual and unique needs. As part of my professional development, I will later watch part two of this webinar, and I can't wait to see what information I gain from that as well.